some group of developers have been trying to in their words build a better way to use the internet and what better way to do it than to overhaul the current web browsers look and feel and thus a new wave of what is now known as productivity browsers was born and for the past couple of months i have been testing three of the ones that seem to be the most popular at least from my searches and in this video we're going to look at what these new types of productivity browsers generally look and feel like my top pick from the three that i've been testing and how i personally use the one that I've settled on. And finally, I'm going to give my verdict on whether or not these browsers actually enhance your productivity. The first noticeable difference is the URL bar and tabs on the top, gone. I remember when I first started testing Sigma OS, not seeing the tabs up top felt weird and oddly satisfying. I personally feel like those tabs, if you have enough of them open, are just stress inducing and the reason why I vibe with the new browser designs. The second thing is the tab placement. Of course, they've not completely gotten rid of tabs. They are an essential part of browsing, but instead of up top and always in your face, the new browsers have taken a different approach of putting them to the side and treating them like to-do lists that you can just uncheck once you're done or like app icons. Then the third feature is the productivity browsers lean heavily on shortcuts, which makes sense as a major component of productivity is efficiently doing more. And that's what shortcuts are all about. So if you ever decide to use any of the productivity browsers, spend enough time learning the shortcuts because that's where you really enjoy the benefits. But the most important thing across board is that the tabs and other distracting browser elements are no more the stress inducing styles of the show. They are off to the side or completely out of sight, making the content the absolute center of focus, which then translates to better focus and productivity. I have already given away the three productivity browsers I've been testing, but if you missed it, they are Sigma OS, Sidekick, and Arc. And the one I vibe with the most is Arc. Now, I think the other two are equally great, similar from design and idea standpoint. In fact, I think Sigma OS has a more sleek and modern design, but something about Arc just makes it feel like that's the one. You know, like if I had the skill, that's something I would design for myself, so I stuck with it but you can try a bunch of them and see which one speaks to you. And this is the perfect segue into how I personally use Arc and some of my favorite shortcuts and features. Top on the list is how it treats tabs. Sigma OS treats tabs like to-do lists and then Sidekick leans towards app icons. But Arc was like, why not do both? So on Arc sidebar, you can have websites as app icons on the top and they're always there across all your spaces. How I use this feature is simply opening up a website or websites that I frequently use, like say Gmail, and then dragging it onto the app icon section to have those websites or collection of apps open at all time across different spaces. And then right under the apps section, there is the space where you can have a collection of websites that you can put in folders and can also be nested and toggled open and closed to have a cleaner looking sidebar. You drag tabs into the spaces section, just like you do with creating apps. You can also right click on your space to create folders within them and drag apps into the folders. You can swipe on your touchpad or use your mouse to move from one space to another. And you can also use the icons at the bottom of the sidebar. Right click on any space to rename, change the icon, edit thin color, etc. I use spaces to save collections of websites I frequently use for a particular task. So I have spaces for work, web design, writing, typing practice, research, and stuff like that, containing sites to perform these tasks. You can also drag one tab onto another to view them in split view mode. And both tabs can be moved around together like you would with a single tab. You can right click and separate them once you are done. Arc is a Chromium based web browser, which means that all your Chrome extensions will work just fine on Arc. So when you pin your extensions, you will see them on a row right on top of the app icons. You can also access the extensions from the menu or by pressing command plus T and then type in extensions. Now there are many shortcuts, but these are the basic ones that you're likely going to use frequently. Command plus S to toggle sidebar visibility, putting you in focus mode. Command plus T to open a new tab and you can also type in commands here, such as new folder, view archive, settings, etc. 
Command plus shift plus N to open new incognito window. Option plus command plus N to open a little arc window for when you want to quickly do a search or access a website and you don't want to create a completely new tab for it. Command plus W to close the current tab and then command plus Z to reopen the most recently closed tab. Command plus shift plus K to close all tabs in the temporary shelf. Control plus tab to cycle through open tabs visually. Control plus D to open the URL tab on top of the browser and have full screen access to the URL, screenshot tools, extensions, and split screen. Command plus E to toggle extensions. Command plus comma to open settings. Command plus shift plus two to take screenshots. You can drag over an area you want to screenshot or move your mouse around to allow Arc intelligently select areas of any website you're on so you can take screenshots that are cleaner and faster. You can check out the pinned comment for a list of these common ARC shortcuts. It used to be easels and notes, but in March of 2024, ARC removed notes from the browser. And for the life of me, I cannot understand why. It was such a good feature that allows you to take and store notes right in the browser. But now we're left with easels, which is like a brainstorming whiteboard type of tool. So say I want to create a whiteboard of Amazon items I need to upgrade my home office. I can create an easel by hitting command plus T and then typing new easel. Give the page a title if you like. Go to Amazon on a new tab. Drag the Amazon page onto my easel to create a split screen and then hit command plus S to enter full screen mode. Now search for my items on Amazon and then command plus shift plus two to take a screenshot of the product images. And then select the easel you want the screenshot dropped into and the screenshot goes into the easel with the link. How cool is that? You can add text, draw arrows, scribbles and just collect your ideas as much as you want. On the bottom right of your easel, you can click on the share button to choose the visibility of your easel. You can keep it private, share as view only or allow others like your team members to edit. I can think of so many ways to use the easels. You can use them to showcase your portfolio, collaborate with your team, share information with your audience, and so much more. I recently learned that the ARC team uses easel to publish their release notes, which is impressive and a good showcase of how much you can do with this thing. Easel is a lesser known feature of the ARC browser, but one that is pretty powerful. And so to answer the question, does ARC improve productivity? The answer for me is yes. I think Arc have delivered on the promise of reimagining how browsers work. And most importantly, I like how they've done it, you know, keeping things incredibly simple instead of trying to flex their developer muscles and making things unnecessarily complicated. I do think it does improve productivity and it sounds weird to say, but I'm excited to open my Arc browser because it feels fresh every time. It just feels good. Yeah.